ladies and gentlemen welcome back to the gears pro lee what an awesome day we have had so far we've got a chance to uh, you know watch noble go up against oxygen the pioneers go up against e united a crazy map four and map five with elevated and rise and to end the day we got a latin american showdown that's about to happen it's latin american teams fire nice in rebel both these squads man Rebel, we've talked a lot about them. Uh, you know, they're they're a team in our league who really got to upgrade in the offseason, you know, getting Demon back, adding summons to the squad along with Crack and Identus. I feel like they really got all the pieces to the puzzle. They've been looking good. But on the flip end, this new Fire Nice roster newly entering our league, they've been having some struggles sitting at 0 and 3. Why do you feel that is? Well, I'll, I'll go ahead and say that I think that Fire and Ice's struggles is just their their youth. It's it's one of those situations where so much talent, so much ability, so much gun skill. The problem is, is they're not used to playing in these level of situations. They're used to playing in a lot of ranked, a lot of wagers, a lot of those lower level amateur tournaments where you're going to get those players. They just head down at you. And you got players like Chavi and Rapids who are going to absolutely put people on bricks. I mean, they're just going to they're going to send them packing. But then yeah, you get up yeah. here where you don't have teams and players. They're going to they're going to fight against you. They're going to play back and pull out a Lancer and they're going to, you know, go for the power weapons. They're going to early rotate and you're just not used to it. And I think that's what Fire and Ice is, is having to deal with right now. I look at this as growing pains for that team. They are having mm. struggles learning to be high end professional players. But guess what? They're in a perfect environment to do just that. And they've been playing up against some some great squads, you know. When it's game day and you're on a main stage and you have a prime time matchup against one of the best in your region, this is where you get to show us what you're made out of, right? And these matchups, uh, a little bit more pressure, but Fire Nice is gonna have to overcome that. And you know how diamonds made, baby. Through straight pressure, okay? And so we'll see how this Fire Nice squad is eventually gonna shine, or will they just melt in front of us, you know, week in and week out as this league goes down, and they can just be um, in that that group of squads who newly entered our league will fall in the bottom two, all right? Or they're gonna end up being a different team. We're about to find out soon because I think out of all the Latin American teams out there, I, I, I love this Rebel squad a lot. But F and I, they're gonna they're gonna give them everything in which they got, and I don't know if it's gonna be enough, but hopefully it's gonna be a great show. I really hope it is too. This Rebel squad, like you said, in the off season, they get Demon back, they pick up summons, they've assembled kind of an all star squad here. There's a lot of power, there's a lot of slaying potential on this roster, and there's a lot of clutch power on this roster as well. We all know. That summons came up big for that optic gaming squad in gears four time in and time out he was the first casualty of that kind of nrg squad he, he was the first player when the og became nrg and then uiu he was the first casualty he got sent over to the pittsburgh knights and has had a bit of a struggle down in the latin american region figuring out ju not just his place but figuring mm -hmm. out where he ranks in the upper echelon of players it's not like he's lost skill he's lost that kind of backup he had with the four legendary players that he used to play with but now he's with three guys that can help him reascend to that echelon that mount olympus type status because him and identives make a gruesome two to some incentives demon we've talked about how he's come along and crack I mean, he is just a couple of kills waiting to happen. He's a grenade, baby. He truly is. He truly is. You can count on him, but let's take a look at our maps for this cycle and see how Fire Nice and Rebel are going to go to war with each other. F and I, they did pick majority of the maps in this cycle. They're going to go with District Control, Training Grounds, Escalation, and check out Execution. On the flip in Rebel, Clock Tower, Execution, Regency Control, I like those two picks for them in the middle. Now, we look at the training grounds escalation, the district control for Fire and Ice. It seems like they have picked their best two maps, um, but I will say that I like this cycle as a whole. You know, I like this cycle as a whole. I think Rebel can definitely get it done in three, but Fire and Ice has picked the map cycle in which they can be comfortable in. I'm a little afraid for Fire and Ice picking training grounds against Rebel and not because of the actual map pick, it tells me that that Fire and Ice kind of wants a, a one hit a quit a map. They want to be able to go into the initial 
and they mm -hmm. want to be able to get the initial one and then hold Rebel down. They don't want to go into a map like Vascar where it's constant rotations. As you know, for me, when I see the training grounds escalation, the first thing that comes to my mind is that Fire Nice has already identified that they don't have the probably the teamwork and skill set to go up against this Rebel squad on Vascar. And also, step number two, do you really want to deal with these boys on Harbor at the winch? You want to deal with Demon and Crack down there? I don't think anybody do, right? That's a simple fight, all right? Rebel loves them some Harbor, so you got to deal with training grounds, which I think is our most balanced escalation map, at least when it comes down to strategy and initials and what you can run. So we'll see if F and I can get it done there, but you got to worry about the first two maps. So let's go into our predictions to see who may come out with a lead in this series before we actually get to that training grounds escalation. Now, I'll kick this one off. Looking at it on paper, I'm keeping it simple. It's going to be Rebel for me. I really like this roster, and I've been talking a lot about them since this team has formed. Um, but, you know, back in uh, um, the Challenger series as they were getting qualified for the Pro League again, and they got a lot of reps in. They've been building off of that work, and even though they're not at the top of the league just yet, this squad is going to peak at the right time. But for them to really come through, they need to get past a squad like this Fire Nice team. And I think they're going to make quick work of them. I'm going to be honest. You know, if Fire Nice, you know, get two maps off the squad, I will be highly impressed and happy. But I think it's all Rebel. Earlier, I said that this might be our thirst trap game of the week based on how both of these teams need to find a win. But Rebel right now might be suffering a little bit more, coming oh so close to knocking on the door of beating Noble just to fall short like all the other teams that have come mm -hmm. up against them this pro league. So for them, they need to focus back up and take this very seriously. I want to see Rebel take Fire and Ice as if they were Noble. I want them to come out here and put them on Beach Street. I want to have them get checked into the SmackDown Hotel. Not that I have anything against Fire and Ice, but I want to see this Rebel squad try to ascend to that level and really make them pay for all of their transgressions. And by all of their transgressions, I mean being the team that has to play them after that loss to Noble. I want to see Ooh. Rebel be able to manifest that level of energy right here, right now, and prove to you, I, and everybody that they not only deserve to be in the conversation of best team in Latin America, but best team in the world. Man, I don't want to go to the SmackDown Hotel with Rebel. Definitely not a party I feel like I'm equipped for. And I don't think a lot of us are, all right? Me and Colin, we're going for Rebel. But chat, where you guys lay? Is it fire and ice? Is it Rebel? How you feeling? You're going to be drenching this screen in all white? Hey, we all white today. Just like our okay. shirts, baby. I mean, look. Just like our shirts, you know, we had man. To you know? off nice. Had to finish it we, off nice. We really did, okay? So we're rocking the white and black for this last series of the night. And, hey, if Fire and Ice proves us wrong, by all means, we will be here for the show. They're currently 0-3 in the league, and one of our newest rosters coming through. And we just feel like it's a lot in which they have to prove. But, hey, there's no better time like the present when it comes down to both these squads. But we got to focus on district control. And, you know, when it comes down to district control, just as a game mode, as a mapping in game mode, you know, I, I think when it comes down to Latin American squads, this is one of their better game types as just as a region. The reason why is because they always fight as a unit and district is a good map to Wolfpack on. I'll be interesting to see how Rebel decides to play this again. I've loved that we've switched up the incendiaries over to the shocks. Now we've got the drop as well. There's a lot of new possibilities on this district control map for you to be able to hold certain areas down or keep your opponents out of certain areas. Do you take the top side of the map? Are you willing to fight through the bottom? These are the questions that are going to get answered here very soon when we roll out of spawn because these are the types of things that we need to know about these teams. We need to see what they're able and capable of doing in these pressure situations mainly right now the pressure is going to end up on the shoulders of fire and ice as they have no no wins in under their belt thus far here we go map number one district control the last series of the night we hope you got your popcorn ready ready to have a good time with me and colin rebel and fire and ice first shot comes out from demon 
He's able to connect with two. Here's the pressure from Crack off the left, but even more pressure coming in from Xavi. Rebel, they're going to walk right into a trap where Crack's going to be the last one left alive. And now Xavi, not too many moves for him to make. He's going to have to worry about summons mid map, and I love that rotation from him. Even though he's not contesting for the heal, he's going to keep his team with some good map position. And I like how Crack's playing back. He's going to play that vertical angle. He's going to try to get the marks on players coming off of respawn and trying to come back into that next fight. And you see Rebel, they're actually trying to hold on to this top right positioning because right now, this is just like kind of what you see on Regency. You want to hold this side of the map and that top spawn going into that next fight is that P2 is the bottom right corner of your mini-map. And right now, Rebel is doing a good job, not only controlling the first hill, getting up over 40 points, but actually controlling the spawns. And Identives with back-to-back -back wraps get the double kill, and they secure, I would say, the whole damn first hill. Clap, clap coming out from the man himself as the back spawn be lacked, will be locked in for Rebel as I say that. Solar was able to find him a kill over cover. Oh, there's a He'll flank. be able to contest this heal. And as Colin said, there is a flank, but that flank will be contested. For now, Toxic, he did enough to shake up these players to give Solars the opportunity to move in and take down Kraken Identives. Now, Rapids will fall. Solar, he doesn't have too many plays to make. He needs someone to distract Demon. They're going to do just that. He moves back into the hill to hold his ground. Getting into the hill now. I want to see what Solar can do against the, the couple of players from Rebel. They're going to try to mount up at this ledge. Toxic with a great angle here. Nobody's challenging up through the middle yet, but you see what they're doing. They're going to full force send at this neutralization, trying to get shots on Solar over the top of that cover. Good job thus far. Now three players from Fire and Ice are stacked up here. They are giving themselves all of the firepower necessary to get a clean sweep on Rebel. And thus far, they are doing just that. Love the angles coming out here from F and I, but they wasn't able to clean up all the kills in which they needed in that fight. Great cutback from Xavi. He is not able to get out. And that's gonna be three members of Rebel set up around Arcade with 40 points remaining. They're in a great spot at this moment. F and I, they just need to start thinking about next. It's still early in this game. Like after this team fight, they shouldn't commit any more resources. What sucks for them is that player one is already rotating because Demon is already expecting Fire Nice to play into that fight. So he's rotated behind them. He just needs to stay alive. He gets the flash off there and a stun, so he's gonna be alive for just a hair longer, but he's still gonna die. And right now, you see what they're doing. Down bottom, I like the fact that Rebel is waited on those new shocks. He's gonna have the shock to be able to block off an angle. I think what you're gonna see is probably using the shock to that stairwell to the right side. But they've gotta make it through Toxic first. Toxic is the linchpin here because he's gonna be guarding the bottom side of the map. And if he gets pressured, he's probably gonna roll back toward those stairs that he's already rolling back. They're gonna play deep into this spawn and go for the Lancer angle here with one player, AKA Solar, playing inside of that info. I want a flash getting a stun and now he's backing around and playing for his angle and damage. This is where the big team fight's gonna come. The drop shot is wasted in my opinion. No need to use it there unless you're gonna go for a kill through the information center all the way into the spawn area. Yeah, that drop shot will be better utilized against Toxic towards the back, but luckily for Rebel, they're able to have a player like Demon on their squad to be able to take two separate 1v1s as the entire team is forced to take down Toxic in that spawn. So Rebel, they're sitting pretty even though I agree with you, the drop shot didn't have to be used there. Ultimately, the goal comes through. That's getting a heal, and that's getting set up. Now, Fire Knight is looking to play right into their hands as they're looking to push through info. They don't have much time to think about this push because as they continue to sit, that clock is ticking away. And just a few seconds go by to the point where there's no point in them rotating in a contest for that heal. So instead, they play for the power weapons. They rotate to next. But F and I, they need a good hold now, Kyle. And if not, I fear they won't have the space and time to come back into this game. Now Rapids inside of the juice. Drop shot on the back of his back. Now Demon trying to pressure him. They're going to get this kill. Crack flies in. I think they were trying to check to see if he still had the drop shot out, but they, they know better now. No drop going to be traded out into the hands of Rebel after that kill. So they're just going to have to try to push back in from the juice or the right side. And... One player playing up now. The other player's playing to the bottom side. Shock will hold him off for another 10 seconds or so, but it's still 
I mean, triple or better the score line of Fire and Ice. Rapids back up into the juice, and he's going to create havoc for these players trying to push him through the bottom started. side of the map. Let's see what he can do here. So he's going to get freshed out of the juice. Toxic is going to get tagged up, and you see Identus trying to rotate away. He's going to go down. That's going to open things up for them to try to continue to over rotate. This is just going to be more interesting as now you see again Rebel, they just don't have an opening. They're not getting multiple kills. They're getting one here, one there. They're trying to push in and somebody dies early. This is a good little hold by Fire and Ice here in the middle portions of this round. You know, it was a great hold. I will say that, you know, Fire and Ice, they don't have to push in and get those two kills in info. Uh, and sorry, in Juice. You know, they got two kills. They had to heal. They just really need to spread out and hold their position. You know, they know that their opponent with the two members that they got is not about to press into them. I understand that you want to stagger the deaths, but, you know, sometimes a solid team fight with you in your same positions, it's just where you need to be and see if your opponent can win off the next initial. If not, you beat them again. Now, Rebel, they will be able to rotate towards next to Pergola. Stop. They stopped Fire Knights from, I feel like, getting the most of that bandstand healing, which they should have. So Rebel has find themselves in a in a pretty decent spot with Fire Knights trapped outside the juice. They try to muscle their way through, but with three Rebel members guarding the hop up, they're able to get one kill. Now, Demon will drop by Solars. Toxic taking down Identives. That, to be the, that will be the opening that Fire Knights needs to get towards the back spine. And they're going to be sitting pretty here. Crack needs to get out. I, I almost like that play from Identives, though. He's forcing the drop shot out early. He's making him just use it so he doesn't die. So there's no power weapon for them to use to hold the hill. Granted, a couple of players from Rebel are going to die. There's 40 seconds left on this, which gets to 160 to 120 if they stay the whole time. But you know they're going to have to go with an early rotation. And you see here, I think Fire and Ice, they're going to have to be aware of that. I think there might be one little retake attempt from Rebel. But if they don't get a successful retake or a bunch of successful kills, I assume they're just going to start rotating over to bottom bottom left. You know, anytime you see the team fight looking slow, if you see that power weapon player, straight line them, force them to use it, get it out of his hand so you don't have to worry about it when you're a full four. Whereas Rebel try to muscle their way through the spine, it's not looking good. They get pinched from multiple different angles, and Fire Knights will be able to collect on the rest of that time on the hill, but it's not much, right? Yeah, they won a team fight, but, you know, they really didn't get much out of it because they have to really sprint towards the hotel side of the map. They were so far away from it, and based off how long that fight lasted, Lasted. Rebel got themselves some solid spawns. Toxic gets caught out in a 3v1. His teammates are now in a bad spot. As you're going to see, Crack has the info angle. He's shooting straight down. But even with that support fire, his teammates still cannot get the kills in which they need. Identus gets forced away with that shock. And Rebel, you're looking good here in the mid game. Rebel is actually, Sorry, to me, Fire and Ice yeah, is looking Fire, good in the mid game. Fire and Ice is looking great in this mid game, but I was going to say Rebel to me looks like they're starting to take it easy again. They're, they're, they're playing with their food. They're not Someone, playing there. to the best of their ability. It's like they're all trying to go Superman and highlight real positions. Solar with 12 kills and 15k damage already is a monster of a man on this map. I love that Xavi's up to 11 with 9 and 7 for kills and assists. I mean, just doing a great job, both of these players really putting Fire and Ice in the positions they need to be to be able to win this map one against Rebel. Rebel's going to have to pick it up here. They're going to have to do it quick, fast, and in a hurry because that drop shot ever lurking. Wow, that drop shot goes deep and Summons doesn't go down. Talk about, like, just getting away with your life. That was huge because he will contest this the entire time. You know, granted, Identus could have moved up next, but, you know, they could easily take the 2v1 there. But with them knowing that two players is in the area, they have to respect Summons and Identus. And at this point, Fire and Ice, they're going to rotate out right before they were able to acquire this lead. And I think Fire and Ice is in a good position. It's only a, a five-point differential. I mean, if you could have told them that before this round started, they'd have probably been like, yeah, we'll, we'll take that starting point. We'll start five points down if we can start at 158 to 163. I don't think there's any issue with that. And, and you see here, Summon's just going to hold this. Summon's the king of the 1v1 for a long time, holding Solar off and keeping one of their best players out of the next fight. That shock is going to be a little bit late. 
Fury's gonna oh. be back behind that uh, that lamp, that light post, and now nobody can push into the backside of the cinema. Crack doesn't hit as bit of a shot as I think he wants to. He's gonna come away with one kill. Over the top of the cover, Summons gets one. Now Summons is gonna get Lancer out from the middle. There's Solar, who chased him down and got the kill they needed to get the initial again in their favor. And the reason why that happened is because Rebel got flustered. They had a great defense. Identus with a beautiful cross, but when they started to shift over, Identus picked up Summons guy who was rotating down low, and Summons went to the fight. That got Summons there a little bit too late, and that left Crack and Demon fighting a 2v3. They tried to hold off as long as they could with the shot grenade, but everyone still should have played man-on-man, -man, and Summons should have just cut mid-map. To continue, I think that was Shavi who he had in that 1v1. He had to challenge him, and Identus had to get a good cross for his team in that 3v3 fight. It didn't work out, and that's why Fire and Ice in this moment is thriving. But Rebel, can they break through? As I say that, that's two kills coming through for Solars. And, and, and in this moment, F and I in a winning position. F and I is definitely putting the bricks and the kicks to Rebel. Rebel needs to find a bunch of kills in quick succession here. They need to be able to find a way to fight back. B2 is going to spawn in the next few seconds, next few moments. You see it's already started to poke out. Xavi shot over the top. Oh. Double the active, Double the active from Xavi. Big time kill to reset Save. this fight. And now Rapids has the, the angle plane. on Identives. So far, Fire Nice, man. They've been playing so well. And, you know, I didn't mean to call them in a winning position off that last heal, but, you know, the way they were set up, the way they've been playing in the late game, it just felt, just feels like they're going to close this map out in a victory. Now, I know Rebel can turn up, but they got to start showing us something because, Colin, I'm with you. I think they started to fall flat in the late game. As we're at the arcade heal, Fire Nice, they're capping up on points. Rapids is forced to fight through to the spawn, allowing his teammates to get set up and get some more points. And it's going to be up to Shabby with a huge flank. He's going to get spotted out. But look at the Lancer angle. The Lancer angle, he is able to still see the stairs, forcing Rebel down into the fight, a fight in which they shall win. They will be able to clean up the rest of the time at RK, but based off the score line and it being 34 points remaining, Fire Nice. They either need to fight now or start rotating the next. If I'm Fire Nice, I might as well, you might as well just try to push into this one more time. Keep the pressure on the Rebel. Make them make a mistake. Make them get a victory, really, at this point in the map because this kind of pressure, these points accumulating, are going to make it that much harder for Rebel to come back into this map. One up over 245, getting into that 250 point range. Rebel, they've got a long mountain to climb. This P3 is a, an important hill for them. This top right section of the map is going to be very tough sledding. I like that Summons has taken up the position in the backside of the spawn now. He has a great angle, and he's going to be able to hurt anybody trying to push in through that info into the hill. Let's see what they do with this positioning. It looks like Fire is actually setting up for another drop. It looks like it indeed with player 7-6 in the mid-map. They're going to have to deal with the cross from Demon. But they get the spawn down low. Demon's caught out on the wrong side of the map. It should be a quick pickup. Demon will have a flank. I think Rapids will see him on that side. But you can't put... You need to kill Demon. But you don't want to use too many resources trying to get him. Oh! Oh, my God. And I, That right was brutal, here. but this is spooky season. It's just as brutal. I mean, look. Somebody's got to pull their hatchet out sooner or later, right? Oh, no. Oh, stop! No. <laughs> oh, yo, where's my, my man God. franchise when I need him? That can't happen. Bro! Rebel has not even had to leave their setup because Demon has been single-handedly putting everyone on skates by himself on the opposite end of the map. It got to the point where Kraken Summon says, okay, well, we're bored. We're going to push out, join the fight as well. There's no way in hell they're going to contest us for the rest of ATM. That put Rebel back into the lead off that fantastic spree of kills coming out from Demon. Yeah, without a doubt, Demon single-handedly putting his team back in the lead here in this map and giving them a, a chance and a position really to set up and probably win this here on the next hill or two if they don't get too many neutralizations. That bottom middle hill was dominated by Fire and Ice last time. If it's dominated again, we are going to see a win for Fire and Ice on this map one. So you see Demon trying to push back in, trying to get into this angle where they can get a lot of damage out of these two players stuck in this cubby. Worst case scenario, get neutralizations on the hill to keep them from getting points. 
Demon getting flown at by Xavi. Xavi double bounce out, gets the break on the meat shield and the kill. Now trying to roadie straight through the middle of both summons and crack. He's gonna get taken down and he's gonna be put back on the respawn. Oh man. Now, as you're gonna start to see Rebel, they start collecting on the rest of the time as down low. They can win off this hill. We'll see if they will continue to hold. The great shots coming out here from Idenis to guard this drop shot. He cannot lead his position. He tries to go for the quick pick, but it's not his time. Instead, he gets marked out. He gets hunted. But luckily for him, Demon has his back. Oh, a little shimmy switch. Allow Demon to get him, but he missed his wall cancel to save Idenis. That's the help he needed to get the drop. And he loses his fight against Solars. That's a big double kill coming out from Solars. But a quick rap shot from Crack. He wants a double of his own. Tried to get the triple, but it is absolute chaos on this hill as Fire Knights will make it back in once again to contest. And only 14 seconds left on this. You're going to look for a contestation maybe, but you're going to start thinking about that next rotation because I thought this hill might, be, might not be the end. We were probably going to see another hill be spawned up, and we are exactly going to be in that position. It's going to be the Pergola. Crack tries to roll up, gets a big body shot. Him and Summons get a kill here inside of the juice, opening up the quick flank into that Pergola area. Nobody waiting on him. Eight seconds to go. Three players in the hill, and I think that might be it, Blaze. Ah, uh, with a drop shot in hand and a strong defense. Rebel standing side by side as a unit come together to, to get through that, that early game deficit that they had and cool off the fire nice squad off the back of that man on your screen. 21, 20, and 13, but 21 K damage dropped to his name. That was Demon. You watched him absolutely go off there to, to help his squad get the lead in the late game. I really am just so impressed with how Demon was able to basically single-handedly turn that map around. Like, all on his lonesome, right there in that mid lane and the juice, getting two people to come up in the juice after him, getting a couple of kills, then getting that little turnaround right in somebody's grill. It was just so good to watch for an MVP player like Demon to have an MVP-like performance and to, of course, showcase that sometimes raw skill can save your butt in a pinch it truly can man you know some players they just have that 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 switch in which they can flip for them to be able to take over and you know with rebel being down in this map demon said you know what i have had enough and and, and all these players in my lobby in this lobby i'm just trying to sun them they are my children and he just went dad mode okay he just went he went dad mode and juice and from that moment on, Rebel got their confidence back. They were able to close out this map. We, you know, we, we talk a lot about, you know, Demon really snapping off there. But, Colin, can you figure out any other um, point in this game where Fire and Ice lost it? Uh, toward the end there, Fire and Ice, they, they kind of separated themselves from all that team fire, all that teamwork where they were looking for the flank angles. You saw them pushing into the same lanes. Like, you'll see it in a couple of these highlights as we get toward the end game situations where it looked like things needed to turn back in the favor of Rebel for them to get a victory. There's a 2v1. Demon pushes out. This is part of his big play where he got all those kills back to back to back, where he went absolutely nutty buddy here in the juice yeah, at the end. Show me the turnaround. Show me the this turnaround one. shot, please. Hello. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> Oh. But, but look right here. Two players stuck in a corner with snubs out. Both of them go down to the big body shot of summons and demon. And now pushing in one at a time. You'll see that player take the cubby. Here comes the, uh, the wrap. Here comes the next up A from crack. You see him just pushing in one after the next. It's not a team effort. It's not a team fight. Rebel stopped started or Rebel started doing that, which is what got him back into the game. And Fire mm -hmm. and I stopped doing that, which is what lost them the game. Man, you can never get too comfortable, folks, okay? You got to play to the end of the series every single time. But that's going to be map one wrapped up for Rebel. We got to start talking about map two soon. And another big question is, is that F and I, they need not let that one, need not let that map bring them down, okay? And that's one of their tests and they're going to have to go into this one with. Because with them being 0-3 in our league, they have found themselves in this position beforehand, right? Yeah. You know, we, we saw how much control they had over that district map, but in the end, they lost it. 
But it's going to come down to how quickly you can regain, especially as we head over there towards Clock Tower. Um, I think that's the execution map that probably takes the most teamwork out of all the ones in which we have. I think that this is going to be interesting, simply because if Fire and Ice get a little flustered and they play a little bit of 1v1, we've seen what Rebel, especially, I, I'm pretty sure Summons is going to bring some of those strats over from the Pittsburgh Knights. They're going to play double up on that snipe. They're going to try to get it into the hands of a guy like Identives and try to get some big highlight reel plays. I don't expect Rebel to do anything necessarily out of the ordinary. You're going to see them play man up. You're going to see them go for a snipe strat or two. And what they're going to try to do is, is keep Fire and Ice off kilter, keep Fire and Ice from getting the team fire that they probably want and need to get back into this matchup, especially in these first few rounds. Those are the important ones. If you can keep them off kilter, keep them back away from where they want to be, you can definitively make this a 2-0 and really have all the righteousness in the world to make it a 3-0 sweep. All right. We'll see if they, if they can do that. We'll see if they can just, uh, you know, keep applying that pressure to FNI, them being Rebel, and come out on top of this map. I'm excited to see how this is going to break down. And also, I want I won't Fire Nice to play with a, with a lot of aggression on this map, okay? Especially if the first few rounds don't go their way. At a certain point, you're going to have to lose on your own terms, okay? Not lose trying to play safer or trying to be more reactive to your opponent or not be the guy to, to make the mistake. Sometimes you got to die being a guy trying to make the play. And as time goes on, you know, those plays will become um, clear to you in the round. And, you know, as long as these players hold that confidence, they'll be able to properly assess when they need to go off. But at the end of the day, the, the mission is clear. Eliminate your opponent as quickly as possible. Shots over the top right now, and here's the flashes and smokes everywhere. And you saw that maybe they wanted to go for a little bit of a snipe strat here, but they're not going to get it all. They're going to have to play back. They're going to have to continue to play for damage. Demon continuing to try to body check whoever might be trying to rotate to the bottom of the map. Now they get it down. They get a couple of downs now. Fire and Ice trying to pressure up on a Rebel. Two down and dead. Four versus two. Crack tries to get a body shot and then a slide in for the chunk. Rebel, he's going to get one before getting taken away. First round over to Fire and Ice. That's a good first round for them. They need to keep that momentum and they need to continue to build off of it. Continue to build off of it indeed. You know, Demon with a thousand damage for his squad. Not much coming out from that. But on a flip in, you know, you saw FNI scoreboard. Two players there for them over that 1K go, go, go. damage marker. Great effort. It's going to be toxic. I think he was playing that back pillar to kick off that round, but he was the anchor to the squad. He's going to be there once again. He's going to have to really keep his eye focused on that back lane. Demon rotating up top quickly. He saw the pressure from the flank. He called it out to the team. Called for the quick sniper pickup. Rapids will even the odds. Solars from downtown. Can't connect uptown, but he still has one nade to work with as he's guarding the flank. Rebel is currently pinched, but can I Dennis? Oh, yeah, he, he hits these. He hits those. That's the easy shot for him, okay? Hell, that's a Wednesday. Oh, but that's a big play coming out from Solar. Now a 1v2 up to Summons. He was feeling comfortable for a slight moment, but he's going to head down. That's a solid shot, but he gets crossed out. Two rounds in a row. Fire and Ice, they're on the roll. They're in momentum area right here. This is where we need to see something out of Rebel that gives us some hope for them not to just make it 1-1 going into map three. See if they come up with any kind of different strategy here. Anything they might be able to throw that gives them a little bit of a right, little this. bit of a cause to pause. As they roll out of spawn, everybody flying to the top side of the map. Yet again, another 4v4 situation. Demon trying to look here. He's going to get tagged up, actually, and he might go for, go for the press here. He was marked up, but now it looks like Demon... It looks like almost like Fire and Ice felt like they had an overload. They pressed up pretty heavily to try to get into the sniper rifle. Demon here is getting one back A for a kill. Now we have to worry about the other player coming out of prison. He's going to get chunked out. That's going to be 3v3, but they've given up the top side of the map over to Rebel. So now Fire and Ice, they're going to have to rotate down to the long... They're going to have to rotate down to the nades. They have the long shot in hand. Toxic looking for anybody to try to get a body shot onto, but unsure if he's going to get anything in this situation other than possibly some just body shot damage. I don't really think you're going to get a headshot. They're going to set up here at the van as that overtime hill is just in front of them between the two vehicles. All right, Toxic snipe in hand. Shavi with a twerk bow. 
Player fives just trapped himself in spawn, and that's what you don't want to see if you're fire and ice. At this point, you tell them just run to the back as far as you can. Now, his teammates with some good shots with the twerk and a beautiful sniper headshot. They clean up both kills, but here comes Crack. He can't do anything in a 1v2. I will say this. Great transition to the back of the spine to go avenge your teammate from fire. Nice. Because if you just chalk them up to die, most likely they might lose that round. But instead, Shabby and Toxic, they stay proactive. They knew those players were going to be in the open. I just think that right now, Fire and Ice, they're playing better as a unit. You keep seeing, like, right there, Crack, he came in. It's about seven seconds too late for you to be able to help your teammates in that situation, brother. You're going to have to get there quicker if you want to help them out. Now you're going to see in this round, once again, Rebel trying to play for a long shot strat. They get into the hands of Identives. There's an early down there on the side of Fire. Okay. Hey, yo, I like the strat. Yo, like the he strat. unplugged his controller. <laughs> Yo, he's behind cover. There you go. Okay. Yo, he knocked off his joystick, but his teammates covered him. It's going to be a four-man retreat. Crisis averted, but can they save the round? There's a down at Nate. Solar caught out. I did this controller goes A-wired again, but he's saved. He needs new batteries, but as he is trying to just turn it on, trying not to get caught out again, will his life be saved for a third time? Hi, Blaze. I'd like for you to help me out here. What uh, What do you think the call out is for get the hell out of Dodge? Because that's that's twice now. That's twice now where Identity's controller dies in the no worst mommy? possible place. <laughs> Tranquilo? I don't know. It's, it's, what, it's, you know. it's one or the two. Probably neither, but you know, we're, we're limited on just even the English in which we speak, so we're not even going to tap into Spanish. I mean, I, now, I would, I'd just be Hoffman in that situation. Boy, what in the hell is wrong with you the second you stop rolling around? I'm going to be very curious what the heck has happened to you. Good big kill there by Crack, though. Really makes it hard for them to even fight back into the situation. It's a 4v2. Crack here with a teammate behind him playing to the backside of that cubby. They get the one player caught inside of the prison. Now Crack is going to get down. Identus rolls in for the quick revive. Good job there. Three to one, Rebel. They find their first round on the board now. They will be continuing this campaign in round number five. Can they continue to answer back? They got to clap back here, I think, with another big round. They cannot let this go to 4-1. That's a very tough mountain to climb. Yeah, they really can't, you know. Uh, and I know that, you know, somewhere for Rebel, they feel like that round was a gift. So it may, you know, hit just a little bit differently. Um, you know, as far as uh, a regular round, only because I feel like it was one that they should have lost, right? And when you come away with rounds like that, it just does a little bit more for your squad's morale, and they need all in which they can get for this comeback. Multiple smokes out, a few flashes left for both of the squads, a lot left here for Fire and Ice. They may be able to make the first move when it comes down to acquiring a power weapon. Yeah, they flash out the secondary, push towards the inside. Summons gets caught out, but he doesn't give up his positioning. Unfortunate for him, there's a miss roll after a kill, but the remaining members of Fire Nice, they get caught up and they get ate up. Rebel comes away with a must need around. Good back to back rounds for Rebel. Love to see that kind of fight out of them again. We saw last round last map where fire and ice they get a little cocky they start playing away from each other and they don't really have the necessary manpower in certain areas to fight off the retake from rebel and that's exactly what's starting to happen now fire and ice has to be a little bit more careful here because if they get another kill early in this one and rebel rolls to a 3-3 that momentum is going to be right in their face a smoke out wide identis can see multiple lancer bullets coming through He's able to get the call out for the squad. All four members up top. But you take a look at the U-tail. It's F and I who saved majority of their nades, but Demon came up top with a frag. That's enough. Surely they don't go back to the back pillar. Where's his second nade? He doesn't have the cutoff. He goes down. Identus misses the shot. It looks bad for Rebel, but they make it a 3v3. Identus needs to go big. One more misses. It's a 2v3 in favor of Fire and Ice. A body shot's there. A down comes through for F and I, and they shall get the round 4-2 for them. And I guess, Colin, my real question is, is that I guess Demon tossed the nade before he came up, and that's why he didn't have the second. 
because you use your first nade to force them off the back pillar, and if they have the audacity to go once again, you use the second nade to acquire a kill. Yeah, you've got to be able to herd them around with those fragmentation grenades, but that's a big folly play out of them. There it is, the fourth round on the board for Fire and Ice. Two more rounds to go here. And they get a dub. Let's see what they play. It looks like Fire and Ice is going to send one player underneath toward those frag grenades. Demon's going to play out toward him a little bit. Lancer out. It's going to force Solar to try to throw at least one. Oh, now he's going to throw both. He gets some oh, damage on the Demon, but Demon rolls out of the way. And Identive's up top, finds one of his own. That's going to be 2v4, now 1v4. We're going to see ourselves a 4 to 3. Identive goes for a little bit of a flick right there, a snapshot, but won't be able to get it. Rebel. Answer back. They got to get a couple of rounds in a row to tie it up. Maybe take a lead here if they want to try to win map two. I've loved thus far the way that Fire and Ice has played each of these rounds. They've tried to keep Rebel guessing by throwing different looks. Demon just called the strat that time and just right, outplayed him. Let's hiding go. at that corner, waiting for him to come back out into the open, mm -hmm. putting a lot of damage out and forcing the grenade throws. Yeah, Solar's had a great nade. He, you know, I liked his two nade tosses. He may have rushed it just a second or wasn't quick enough in his decision. I Dennis with a quick sniper picked up, pick up. He's not touched. They see Solar picked up the nade. And at this moment, I Dennis first thought is to go wide down low, but he gets the call out that they're not going to be contested. Oh, that's a body shot on Xavi. Almost a headshot just comes up short. But Rebel with their feet planted, they're going to have majority of the control up top, having that sniper and having a player on lane on the line. But they got to dodge these nades. Yeah, that was a bad first name. Second frag. That second name is stairs. questionable. That's beautiful. Oh, I thought they were going to catch somebody nah, those coming don't down work. the stairs. I really thought he was going for a bank shot. I, I thought we were about to see Timmy D Jr. out here, man. Like he was playing for the San Antonio Spurs. You know, the effort the was there. Class. The effort was there, but like it, like it is, you have to toss those nades together. Like, after he tossed the first thing on Identus to make him back row, the second nade should have went behind him. Instead, it was just a big gap between the two. Easily dodgeable nade, um, you know, at the end. It's F and I who loses that advantage, and now Identus with six shots left in the chamber. Can he clutch up for the squad? We're about to find out soon as they are about to rotate up top because they know they have to play off their right hand. I love the switch up and they got the power weapons to work with. Second Torpo almost scary. catches summons. He sees him slide across his face. Two players playing right there at the prison. This is going to be hard to play against. Throws the flash There you out. go. Gets the torque most splash damage. Solar's still playing right inside. Yo, yo, he's free. Inmate's free, Ooh. but he doesn't get a kill. He gets torqued instead, and now it's a 4v2. Two players left for Rebel to try to tie this thing up. Two to go. Oh, no. Rebel, it's a 4v2. Stand they the stand hill. united stand on the, the hill. hill. Yeah, and yeah. they're going to win it just like that. It's 4-4 on the board between Fire and Ice and Rebel. What another close map that we got between the two. Our first control was only a 20-point differential with Rebel coming out on top. And now it's all being tied up 4-4. That was the torque bow that really made the round. Just put it on the ground. They got a second one for the cleanup. Uh, but good job to Rebel just rotating the map and getting all the power weapons in which they can for that last and final heal. But let's see who can get to map point first. I loved that out of Rebel. They were in a 4v2 with the hill about to spawn. And I know Mob Deep was a hip hop group in the 90s, but they went Mob Deep into the hill. And that was a beautiful little last stand by the side of Rebel to get that fourth round on the board. Tie it up. Demon on the flank now. Trying to garner some attention away from his teammates on the other side of those stairs. They need to come away with a kill here. It's a 3v3 fighting back up the hill. And you see the Ooh. headshot of Solar. He comes back into the fight uh -oh. and now has the angle. Oh. Turns and burns. Gets his head straight Summons. clean off his shoulders. Run. Summons. Run. Vominous. <laughs> no. No Yo. escape. I see, like, when I saw the player come up screen right, I'm like, bro, don't do it. Don't do it, Solars. My God, look at it. Oh, here we go. Yeah, yeah, no, we don't want to watch this. There we go. Boom. Screen right. He sees him. Hey, one shot. Oh, beautiful, beautiful plays from Solars. Fire and ice. They're at map point. Can they close it out? We're about to find out now as it's Rapids. He's going to be spying Demon down low. He didn't get the immediate mark. He will catch Demon rotating up top. 4v4 situation. 
still a lot of utility grenades to be used for both these squads. Not a single nade being tossed. They want to save them for the late game. At this point, you know, it's like a round of chicken to see who wants to initiate first. Oh, Flash we got our answer. Out. Crack pulls his head up on the right-hand advantage, tries to get that down onto the host spot. He got the down. Demon gets it down there over there. They go for the revive, and Identives is not in the position to get the shot. Ooh. Body shot there on the misroll. And now it looks like Fire Nice is going to rotate underneath. They've got one player going into the nades. It looks like I think Rapids is going to have a free pick there, and he will have the fragmentation grenades. Oh, no. They get the mark on Identives. Rapid stays inside. He knows that this is not the time to rotate out. He has two power weapons to deal with. Shavi and Toxic, I love their aggression, but I did this with the lineup. Times it perfectly, knowing his opponents move probably before they even know it themselves. It's Rebel with a man advantage. They also have the Torque Bow to work with also. It just, they're sitting pretty. We know the hill's not gonna be up top. Or is it? We know, we know it's not. It's down low somewhere. I was going to say, there's no way they're pushing this hard for the down low car position. It's going to be a four versus two here. Shavi and Rapids got to try to find a kill early in this one. They got to come away pretty cleanly, but Identives with a headshot there on a Rapids. And now Chavi presses him. Identives must have hit a body shot, maybe an, a melee there, but I think it was a body shot to get that down. There's the finishing blow. Round 11 coming your way. It's all tied up five to five. My God, what a time to be alive here. We have seen so many like crazy matchups throughout the day. Awesome series, awesome maps, but another one has graced our presence. We're in a round number 11. Who's coming out on top? Both these teams fighting tooth and nail. And, and you know, I'll feel so bad for Fire and Ice if they lose this map after they have worked so hard against this Rebel squad who seems to just inch their way to victory. And it's Rebel who looking like they want to make the first move, Colin. Crack with sizing up Shavi with the flash. And with this spacing, they, they'll be able to cut Shavi off no problem, possibly get a stun. But I, I do believe it's Solars. He had his nade waiting in hand, too, to counter the push coming from Crack. Both teams don't know where the first move is going to come from just yet. My man Crack has taken a couple of big body shots here, and I'm watching his percentages because it's one of those situations where I'm like, man, you're playing around too much right now. You got hit with a body shot. You went down to 75. You tried to hide behind that pillar in the prison. You went down to about 50. Four versus four. You said it was a game of chicken here. And right now, it seems like Rebel is just trying to bait out Fire and Ice, trying to give them a shot or two every now and again. Demon all the way down to 40% for just a moment. Now Rapids, Shavi, still at that host and mid position spot there, secondary. Smokes are going to be out. Here comes the flash. Crack tries to go for the rotational angle. But I love that from oh. Crack. The readjustment gets oh. one. The melee gets two. Now it's two versus three. Last three players alive. Four Rebel will have to try to get these That's last it. two kills. And that should wrap it up. Both players down. Both players out. And Blaze, another come from behind victory. Four Rebel gets them a 2-0 win and lead in this matchup against Fire and Ice. We will be going to map three escalation. Can Rebel finish this here in one more map or will Fire and Ice begin their marathon march back? Find out after this. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Gears of War Pro League as we are deep into our last series of the day about to head into map number three. But man, has Rebel had to dig deep to be up 2-0 against this Fire Nice team who starts off so strong but just falls so short in the end to close out these maps. I'm honestly worried about them at this point because they have been playing so well and, and they're not a bad team. They're really a great team, but they just have to get over these woes, Colin. They really do. And, and I need to give some props here in a moment. I hope we see it from the final round. I don't think we've made it there yet. I'm, I'm waiting for this because I need, I need the world to witness what might be right. my favorite play in, in Clock Tower Gears 5 execution history. Not in all of Clock Tower history. Gears 5 execution history. 
That final play from Crack. I mean, he he went in and he put everybody on their back. Crack just went absolutely nuts. His out. timing was perfect. That's the one thing that I kind of noticed from it, and I'm excited to see it as well, because we saw him playing on a secondary, and when he went in, he was able to time the player on back pillar like he was stepping up for the revive. Gets the chunk, finds another. Here we go. He, he steps up, he's done. He cuts back on a sniper player, cuts back on a remaining two, gets his shot. He knew what Fire Nice was trying to do, but also too as well, after you play a squad for, for 10 rounds, okay? One thing is factual. Once that many grenades are thrown, somebody, something's about to happen. Somebody's about to move. And how you time your play around that shows what type of gears of where player you are. And that was great timing from Crack. I believe the word we're looking for is buena. Mucho buena. <laughs> I believe. Mucho bueno el Crack. Exactly. Yes. I mean... Good Lord. I, I still am like, I was in awe of it over the break. I kept thinking, I was like, man, the, the, the faith that his team had to have in him or the faith that he has to have in his team where all of a sudden he's like, I know I'm supposed to be pushing secondary, but but I'm pretty sure y'all just had a flashbang on the guy coming off a back pillar. Maybe I should go over there and just shoot him in the face. Yeah. And he did. And that was, was perfect. Amazing. And, you know, imagine this, like, he he caught the back player in transition. He didn't even have to cut back to the player on snipe. He could have stayed back pillar, pulled out his lancer or something, and just been a nuisance. But he knew a lot of players were going to be close together, so he had the right weapon out for the occasion. And that's Rebel coming away with another map. But that's going to wrap up our first two. The series is not over just yet. We got to talk about training grounds, escalation, a map in which Fire Nice picked. And it, it, it's one where... Um, they're going to have to just keep giving it their best, okay? Their best, it hasn't been good enough, but man, it's been good against this Rebel team. And this is what I was talking about earlier. This, The way that Training Grounds plays out for a lot of teams is the fact that Training Grounds is so big that it's kind of a initial play defense map. If you can mm. play defense a little bit after the initial, you can pretty much win rounds wholehandedly, wholeheartedly. And I think right now what we're hoping to see out of Fire Nice is that they do just that, that they win a couple of initials and are able to hold Rebel back because Rebel, to me, has done a great job tonight of disrupting what Fire Nice wants to do on so many situations. And that could just become true even again if they are not careful. They might win an initial, but they still might lose the round simply because of a good retake attempt by Rebel. Woo! As we're about to head up into this next map, Colin, you know, both these squads been going at each other tooth and nail. I, I'm, you know what? When it comes down to the initial, I'm curious to see how Fire Nice is going to break out into it. Also, too, as well, when it comes down to the weapon placements, you know, we know some squads, they got the sniper trick play, you know, in the back pocket. I don't even call it a trick play anymore. You know, it, you know it's been utilized enough. It used to be a trick play because that used to be no man's land. And, um, you know, classic escalation, especially when you, you get five players on a map. But we start to see that underpass, that underpass utilize more high risk, high reward. But some teams masterfully know how to play that area of the map. And, um, you know, we'll see what Fire Nice is going to bring out. But I'm going to be honest with you. I don't think this is going to be a blowout at all, just like the rest of the maps. Even though Fire Nice lost two close maps, I think we at least go eight rounds in map number three. That'll definitely be good for the confidence of Fire and Ice because they they need something to build off of here. They had Rebel on the ropes yet again in map number two, had a chance to try to close it out on a couple of different occasions in a couple of different rounds and couldn't come away with that victory. They end up losing it in the very final round, round 11, all tied up five to five. And then now you come into this map three, you got to be a little bit deflated, I think, where you've got to be thinking in your head, what do we got to do to beat this team in any map or any situation? Well, the best way to do that is to start right here and start hot and heavy. We're going to have a 3v3 down there at the overlook position with a 1v1 there at the range. No, Xavi's pulled back. Xavi pulled back toward middle and Identus was waiting for him. Yeah, Identus had the same thought process, but, you know, luckily for him, he ended up becoming um, a defender of his flank from that Xavi aggression. Now, look at the aggression from Rebel, though. Three players already rotated towards the home hill. It's going to be Demon coming off the respawn. He'll be trying to force a 1v1 at B or get some Lancer fire in these players back. He down, he, he uh, down Solar. This gives his team a 3v2. That was a quick revive for Solar. And look, Demon, he goes at the underpass. He flanks around. He's getting chased on screen. Some 
Beautiful brown fires from Toxic. He cleans up a kill. Hillman Rapids will be able to fight their way through to the hill. Demon's about to get 2v1 here. He's got to be careful. He's going to fly back into that hallway. He's going to give up the positioning on that hill yet again. It's still pretty close for that early aggression out of Fire Eyes, getting the 2-1 to one hill advantage. They got to get a kill here onto Rapids. They got to find him as they can try to take over that overlook and then maybe put some pressure on that mid-neutral range fight. Big shot. Solar coming in for the revive. Won't be able to get the first one. Crack now. Versus Solar in this area. Pull the snub and shoot the elbow, baby. But no, he's going to turn and try to burn on Identives. And he actually gets a kill here on Identives. That is massive for the confidence of this team going forward. One player playing back at B. Now you see one of them coming up through the middle of the map. Crack gets called out from the God Spot, I believe. And Shavi will get the kill on him. B only hill. Still in favor. Fire and Ice. Now, F and I, they've held this B hill throughout the entirety of this matchup. And it's been a good anchor for them. A consistent location for points. It is uh, a massacre over um, at the heaven side of Fire and Ice. Now they will be able to clean up their kills. They will lose a player in the process. 3v3 on the map. But, you know, where um, Rebels located, they'll be able to capture the B Hill without any issues. And hold two in the late game. They win in 50 with a beautiful God Spot setup. And also, look, player two will have to cross towards the other end of the map. He just needs summons to hold his ground with a little bit of support coming in from the opposite side. I, I And I will say, I think Fire Knight should be playing for the A-Hill right now. If they're going to execute on B, they need to they need to do it now. They, I feel like they're wasting a lot of time. Like, they don't know the play they want to go for just yet. And they're talking about it. Cracking the God Spot is going to get 3v1, I think. He's got two players fighting on him from behind. And he's going to have one come over the middle. He had to find that kill. Nobody's going to get the kill, though. A couple of downs, but nobody's getting anything to go. And it looks like right now, Fire Knights are going to trade off the home hill with Summon. Summon's going to fly across for a breakthrough. He's going to be trying to cap up the C hill. Flash oh, he out, out to him. He doesn't get the finish on the flash either. They get the home hill back. Summons wins one 1v1. Now has a second to worry about. Pulls Lancer, and that's not a good idea. That's a mistake. Nine seconds left, and with two to one hill advantage, it's just not going to be it. Holding on to their home, Rebel secure round one and take a 1 0 lead in map three. You know, I will say, um, you know, great retake on a B hill from Fire Nice, but, you know, they stack so many players over, they let summons just run, run past them for free. And when you making those uh, perfect plays in a late game because you're down so much and you need that trip cap domination, you cannot give up any lane. And for the most part, you kind of have to play man on man. So Rebel, it, it, it started off well, but just allowing one player to get behind enemy lines, it just, at that point, it's not enough time on a clock for you to have to clutch up. That's why I thought their 2-2 strategy to start may have, uh, you know, been a better play to kick that one off. But, hey... Shoulda, coulda, woulda, that's hindsight. We're in round number two, and we're seeing a mirror matchup. Now let's see here where Crack is up top on the overlook. Gonna try to get shots down there on the bottom. He's gonna get tagged up just a little bit. It opens up a little bit of an angle for two players from Fire and Ice to try to rotate into this top spot. L triggers out from both squads, trying to get this final down. Big body shots. There's a flash and a double push. Another very close shot by a player from Rebel. It seems like Rebel is so close to getting chunks or body shots onto their teammates at any given moment in time. Boltock in the hands of Identives, threatening the triple cap domination. Two shots on to Shavi. Shavi will be full red. Bouncing in, he goes down. Triple cap comes on through. Domination. Two to zero. Man, and that's a quick round coming out for Rebel there. That's, uh, you know, that's one that's going to do a lot for them, you know, going into round number three, just, you know, showing their dominance here to fire nice. And th but this is the first time I will say, as we are um, in a map in which Rebel has started off with a lead and that control, it was F and I who had the majority of the points in the first half and that um, execution. F and I went up the first three rounds on Clock Tower, okay? Well, they, they started to let it slip through their fingers. But this time around, after those devastating first two map losses, it seemed like they may have kind of, you know, ran out of gas just a bit. And Rebel, they're feeling comfortable, they're feeling confident, and they want to end this in the next three rounds. Rolling out of spawn here. Identives, uh, taking a lovely Sunday stroll, it seems. Toward that overlook fight. 
Crack will get inside, and it looks like they're gonna. That's the reason for it. They were trying to read how many players are gonna play toward that in, initial long shot fight. Identus has been stunned up in the 1v1 now against Xavi. Xavi shots onto the onto the body of Identus. Identus only hitting one pellet. A lot of big misses there. Crack will go down trying to Crawls escape. Down. Oh, they're gonna be able to save him for just a moment. Revive chain coming out. This would be a triple cap domination Sheesh. situation, but Crack again. Hey yo. Oh, oh, he stays alive. That would have been a big kill for Xavi if he would have just took the fight straight up to try to just take the sniper out of play. You know, in the end, it is Crack with the long shot in hand. Stolar Mark. Demon finds a kill across map at the B Hill. It's going to be a, a B Hill capture for Rebel. It should be an easy one, too, as well. And with no one at C. Strong possibility the trip cap domination can come through, but as I say, that player four did not cap. He tried to revive his team, and he's actually going to retreat out the B hill. Did not want to be there by himself, and Rebel will opt for a home hill setup. Crack now, sitting on the home hill of Fire and Ice. He's going to be the first line of defense with two other players trying to back him up. Summons being one of them. Boltock in the hand of Crack. Very dangerous. Body checks, and he's got the long shot. He. He's not necessarily super banning, but he's close enough with the accuracy this guy has had most of this game. This is that shot, though. One left for that long shot. One player Big from Fire up on the goes flank. onto the flank. Gonna get the kill there, and now Demon just waiting in the wings. Any kill here would be huge. He gets a down. See now Crack plays up a call with a miss. But Demon, he rotates around. He may even get a decap in this situation. And I think that's a win for him. He's going to slow one player behind. He's going to keep one player behind and slow down a push of fire and ice. But that's going to give his team time to put themselves in position to possibly find another heal. As FNI is trying to fortify once again, Identus, he scares Toxic a bit. Just pushes him back just to get some terrain at the fire range. Summons gets taken out. Identus being pitched from two different sides. And Toxic knows... That should be a kill in which he can get, but I didn't stay composed in that fight, and he will keep applying pressure with that body shot from his teammate. He cleans up the kill. Now a two to one heal setup, but player four decap and C. Xavi, he needs to make a play, but he's in nowhere to be found. Well, he's in the middle. He can't do much. He has to rely on his teammates at C. The Identives just going back and forth, keeping the pressure on there. Shabby going across the overlook position. Two to one hill advantage in favor of Rebel. Demon will get spotted momentarily. Hits a body shot there. Baits the up A. They know they have to fly into B. They got to start getting these decaps now. Demon trying to play through the backside. Now they're down to just a few moments left. Demon gets one. Melee out. Tries to get the second oh. shot to get the down. They're going to get B Hill back and holding on to A might still win them this round. Identum can't win. go down here. They got it. They got it on two in the final few seconds of this round. And that's just another one that just, you know, it feels bad for the Fire and Ice fans. That was another close round that they just could not close out. But they are competing. And that's what I like to see, you know? Right there, as we, as we you know, kind of reflect on that round three they fall hard tooth and nail um you know one making sure that they don't allow their their opponent to have their home hill um you know sit on that home hill setup but also two they had a great anchor at heaven and they got a lot of their time b hill during that map but in the end man you know fire nice let another one slip by we'll see if they can get this fourth round in the books or if it's just going to be another close one Rebels. It will be impressive if they come back from this, though. I will say that. Without a doubt, I think what we'll see here is the long shot underneath that overlook is, is definitely a position, a power position early. Summons with a lot of damage out. Nobody going into that long shot is safe whatsoever. Demon has to play back. He plays to the down and damage gets the kill. Surprisingly enough, Fire Nice doesn't go for a Mr. Krabs with all the extra effort and manpower that they put into the situation. Demon might get called out here. <laughs> Oh, I was going to say, I, I was really... Oh, my God, and he turns and ha has help from Crack in the middle. That is a big down. Two to one hill advantage as well. Oh, ho, ho. He was looking for the pickup on that retro. Body shot out from across the tower, all the way up in heaven. Demon just continuing to survey the area in front of him. 
Now looking for a couple of different spots to maybe find a little angle, get a shot on. Solar will have one teammate with him. That'll be Toxic going across the Overlook. You can actually see how much time they're taking down there. They don't want to get secret man. They don't want to have somebody just pop out and kill them. They are taking their time. They're going to mark out Demon yet again. It looks like a three-man push through the Overlook is about to come and rain Hellfire and Brimstone on A. But it needs to come, or C, excuse me. It needs to come sooner rather than later because once again, with a two-to-one hill advantage, every second that passes, it's only making it harder. And now with a kill here across the map, crack that kill is absolutely huge and might open up the rush to A. Xavi trying to put shots on in the back. Body shot here. Identives, any downs he gets will make life harder. Retro oh, no, red hands. Kill. Oh, goodness gracious. This is going to be difficult. I love his positioning. He runs away, allows time for the flank to come through. But Summers has to hold his shot. He loses that battle. It's a race to save by Dentist, and he cannot be saved. But Toxic gets caught out. Oh, Demon gets Lancer, but he gets revived. Trying to get around a corner, he shall. And Rebel will get their home heal back for now. But Fire and Ice, they're in a winning position with two. I think if Rebel times this perfectly and just get a decap, they can win this round. Um, in a defensive setup, so they don't have to play for an actual capture in this moment. You just got to time it right. Solar waiting on the new long shot. Will pick it. He's going to try to get away now. Scott free. I know they've got to get a call out here at the overlook. There's no shot they don't know that he's down here. Crack is going to bounce in, and here oh, comes the, the blank from Identives. They get another kill, 4v3, and they have a down there at the bottom side of the pillar. A hill already being decapped, B hill being threatened. Summons will watch as Identus gets up eight out here. Summons a big body shot here. Needs one more to connect. Won't be able to get it. Shavi, a big kill for him. Retro Lancer in the hand to crack. Any moments left on this A hill while it's still captured up will be just gravy train for them as they go up four to zero. Are one round away from a 3 0 victory over Fire and Ice as a 5 0 on map three would be completely dominant. Completely dominant indeed. Three and nine. The entire Rapids, team. My man. Yeah, the entire team is about to like, go over that 10,000 mark of damage. And you called out a three and nine score line of Rapids. And, you know, you're just going to need a little bit more damage output. Um, you know, coming from him, if, you know, you want to contend out of here, you can't beat this Rebel team feeling like you're a man down. And I'm pretty sure he's giving everything he's got. But just, you know, unfortunate in a score line. Sniper placed down low. You already see the shot grenade being built up um, by Rebel. It can go. Oh, actually, I take that back. They, uh, they, we got the talent placed down low for uh, Fire Nice. All right, heading into round number five. Let's see how these squads are going to break out. I don't think that shot grenade is going to play a factor off the start, but we lost three. Hey, yo. <laughs> what? <laughs> I ain't never seen us lose three. They landing or something. Is that the insane? Come on. I've seen this trick before. Like, I've I, I seen this one. <laughs> Colin, that, you know, um, well, I, I, I guess we had half the lobby blow up on us in the last round. F and I, they found a way to get up out of here. They, uh, you know, it's imploded. It's only nine o'clock. They might, they might have late dinner reservations. You never know, man. You think it was like a, a specific internet shutoff time at nine? I Hey man, that's a hell of a that's a hell of a curfew. I'll tell you that much. <laughs> the internet got shut My off. My internet gets ago? shut off at nine. Those are some all strict, three of them. Those are some strict Ooh. parents. Okay. Who those pulled the Ethernet? Straight mama come running in. You make it on that damn racket up here, boy. I'm gonna turn the damn thing off and then just yank one cable real hard. You know, I I will say this. You know, back in the day, I you know I I love my mama to death. Only time I ever thought about raising my voice to her was I was playing a GB and she had the audacity to come down there and say that she was about to turn off the box. And I said, well, I said, hold up. I said, you ain't touching that box. I've been in this ghost recon GB for four hours. <laughs> Nobody has moved behind this rock. We're, we're locking it in. 
Yeah, my voice went from like a, a five to a six at one point, and my mom and I could hear my dad's pump shotgun just pump once. Like I heard the <laughs> shell click into place, and I was like, "I'm sorry, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't mean any didn't of mean what it. I just said." I'll go outside. I'll just be outside. I didn't mean it. I'll, I'll go walking around. I don't even know where I'm going to go. You want me to go to the woods? I'll go to the woods. I'll be back. <laughs> hey, I don't want no problems whatsoever. Just, you know, let's get through it all. But the fact <laughs> that we lost so many players is just beyond me. Like, I'm just curious of what, of what the excuse is, you know? Like, Granted, you know, maybe that's why the game's been so close. They've been next to each other, giving each other call outs and everything, you know? I was going to say uh, it, what might have happened was they all were like, we need a tactical timeout. One of us is going to shut off our box and dashboard. And then they never agreed on who it was. <laughs> so all three of them just, just they just all down. dipped out at one time. They were like, all right, we're going to get the tack timeout. In three, two. Wait a minute, man. Wait a minute. <laughs> I thought I pulled the short straw. Uh, well, we are getting the players back into this game. Uh, you know, you know, at this point, you know, I, you know what? I will give them the competitive integrity to come back in and finish it out. But I wouldn't be mad if they just threw the white flag up. We understand. You know, we get it. It was a tough series. You know, you got down to the last round. Things happen, you know, just look forward to next week. You know, maybe E days. Yeah, you gotta cut. You gotta just. You gotta figure out how to wash this out. I mean, you're down 2-0 already, and you're down. You're one round away from a 3-0 loss to Rebel, and you haven't gotten a dub here in Pro League. These are, these are the things facing down an organization. I mean, these are the things that you really gotta, gotta figure out for yourself, man. Yo, who's getting chainsawed? But wait a minute. Brown still in his stalemate, right? Or is Cog about to win this? <laughs> Okay. All right, good. Hey, you know, if Cog would have wanted it, you know, I think we're going to have to count it as an official round because I saw, you know, Solar's out here. You know, he was out of spawn before the lag out. So technically it's a live round. Yeah. No. Okay. I tried. All right. Did we get even one more player loaded into the lobby? Yeah, we got two. We got two. They're all coming in little Let's by go. little, one by one. Little by little, getting the entire squad in. You know, some people's internets, you know, take a little bit longer to restart than others. I almost spit my drink out. I did not expect <laughs> demon to just destroy crack. <laughs> I was trying uh, to take a sip like, this is fine. They're all just going to roll away mm -hmm. from spawn. And then demon's what? like, murder. <laughs> also, what are the odds that they all had the same internet provider? Good. Yeah, I think it's a high high possibility. Maybe it was just an outage. Hey, yo, somebody hit me with that internet service provider that had all those outages last. Split. Yo, half the rain games just lagged out. Eyes on target. <laughs> Eyes on target. Oh, man. Yo, is he trying to hip fire him? He might be. Yo, I want to see a. Oh, yo, look, oh, I was going to say, let's watch the team 1v1. Player 1 and 2. Oh, it was cracking demon. And then they got interrupted, so they both turned. They both turned on Solar. Yeah. Yeah, they still teammates, you know. They, hey, they going They see red. They going for the kills right away. All right, Colin. You know what? So let me ask myself, what would Taylor do in this situation? Uh, it's not a good one. It's not a good question. <laughs> you know, I know. I know Taylor is listening to me. Like now, he's like, okay, here go Blaze, go look it. All right. But, you know, I'm not, uh, you know, I think I know all the lore on training grounds already. You know, I think, you know, when it comes down to maps in which we have have uh, wait times on, I feel like we've been on more training grounds and bunker than any other. There's General Karn. General Karn. Yeah, that's the nice. That's the big bad boss of Gears Judgment, man. Black Steel Savage Cantus, everybody's favorite. Always, always. All right. Official stalemate coming through. And uh, is all four players back in the lobby? I think we will have them. Yes, it is. All right. Sorry for the delay, everybody. But hey, this is online gaming. Things happen. And I will say today has been a fantastic show. That's the first hiccup um, I want to say we had all afternoon. So on the last round, hey, I will take it as we have finally kicked this one off. All of Fire Nights back into the lobby. 
And with it being kicked off, we're going to see this sniper matchup once again. Solar is going to get dropped right away. Toxic heads down towards the inside. He's taken out. Quick revives coming out for Rebel. And now there is a dash to the home hill. It's all up to Rapids to make it happen. But can he get it done? He's crossed. He's looking for help. No, He's not, trying no. not to die. No. I did not just wait like seven minutes for three all the lag out and come back for it. <laughs> oh, hey, yo, crack. Hey, imagine. Oh, my God. Not like this. Ladies and gentlemen, in the last series of the night, it is Rebel coming out on top five to zero against Fire and Ice. What a series it was. Demons, your MVP. Map number one was a banger. Map number two was absolutely fantastic. And this third map, it was just a cherry on top for Rebel. That's a 3 0 victory. And they're going to add another win to the tally. Great round, great map, great series by Rebel. But I mean, play is five minutes for that. Really? We just sat around <laughs> for five minutes. That's what for I that? said. I wouldn't be mad if they threw the white flag in. I think I wouldn't have been will. mad either. I had one on me. Hold on. Let me find the white flag. Are you Astros like that? Okay. Hey, that had me messed up. Wait, look. Here you go. Here you go. There you go. Throw the white flag in, okay? You're going to make me take take our shirt off and just throw the shirt off for a second, okay? <laughs> but Ozuna will Pablo not take his shirt now? off on take stream. Shirt Relax, off. okay? We're Never officially on the Xbox it. channel and we won't do that, all right? We won't do that on the Xbox channel. <laughs> <laughs> but um, when it's all wrapped up, said and done, um, you know, just looking at the series as a whole as we go into the highlights of, of map number three, you know, you're going to see this. It, it's going to be a rebel montage on this one because once they got going... They could not be stopped. But um, when you look at the series as a whole, Colin, what did Fire and Ice show you today? Fire and Ice show me that they've got some grit and grind on control and execution. They've got to learn to start closing out a little bit better, and they've got to learn to be... These are the growing pains I'm talking about, though. Closing and continuing to play together. Being patient with one another. So many times, people from Fire and Ice tried to make hero plays in the control late in that game to try to get it back into their favor. And in the execution, I mean, you saw it. Round number 11, they just, they had no answer. They tried to fly and they ended up having to die when they had the flashes in their face and Crack made a beautiful play. But those are growing pains. Learning to fight back against plays like that where Rebel throws perfect utilities or throws great utilities toward the backside. Learning to wait for your teammates and then throw team utilities and go for a retake on those hills and control. It's just, these are the growing pains we talked about, baby. These are the things that come back to haunt you if you're not good enough at them, if you don't practice them the way you should. Yeah, exactly. And, that, and that's what it is, right? It's just growing pains and... But most importantly, just get the practice in, okay? Um, and, and and as our great observer, our legendary observer in the Gears community has said, it's not about just practice. It's about perfect practice, okay? And I quote J Ribs on that one because you can put all the time in the world in this game and be instinctively good as a player. But when it comes down to you being a great teammate and just a great team, that's intentional practice and, you know, picking things to work out on. And so if Fire Nice can do that, hell, they got a great foundation to build off of. I love their players individually. They showed us a lot of heart. They just need more time, okay? And we'll see how um, over these next few weeks they will evolve as a squad. But congratulations to Rebel. That's a 3-0 victory and well-deserved on their part. They fought really hard for it. But that's going to do it for our last series of the day. Man, man, oh man, what a day has it been. We'll recap our scores here in just a bit to get you guys all up to date. but. You know, Colin, it was a good one. It was a good one. We saw a lot of great matches. You know, Elevate and Rise had to be one of my favorites. Elevate and Rise was definitely beautiful. Pioneers turning it on in the second half of those maps against the United. Still yeah. one of the better parts of the night as well, seeing a team rise up from adversity. I really just do believe in my heart of hearts that we're going to see a lot better version of some of these teams going forward. And of course, I mean, how could we go throughout the day without mentioning the fact that Noble just gets scary, like, Ooh, yeah, like they, they, they yeah. are, they are that monster team right now. And, you know, I'm, I'm going to go take a look and see, I'm asking myself like, man, who do they play 
you know, coming up next. And, you know, we'll see their scores in just a bit when we start looking up uh, our matches for next week. But just focusing on today's results, you know, 3-0 from Noble, 3-0 from PK over Hive, 3-1 for Pioneers versus United. Elevate showed that they're not to mess with, but Rye stays undefeated. And another 3-0 coming out on top for Rebel against this FNI team. And, you know, these are all 10 of our squads, you know, getting their matches in for the day. And, you know, when it comes down to it, you know, you, you, you see your winners, okay? I actually think my favorite, uh, outside of all those scores, not talk, like talking about the score, but talking a little bit outside of the score, if we could, I know we can't pull it up, but I wish we could. Detox, mm -hmm. Detox uh, re had a retweet about the score line from their victory over Elevate. When he said they had us in the first half? They had us in the first half. I'm not going <laughs> to lie to you. I'm not going to lie yeah, to you. I saw it. He said, he said, they almost got us, but we finished out strong. And, you know, when the Gears guys told me in my ear that, bro, Elevate was up 5-0 and they could not close out on checkout, I'm like, what the hell happened on that map? How didn't we see it? Pretty sure somebody got it recorded somewhere. Um, but regardless, that was just an, that's an amazing feat. In any execution to come back that many rounds and have a full sale, it's not easy in Gears of War. It takes a lot of progression round after round and a lot of communication to do something like that. Oh, without a doubt, and, and and really, when I heard that as well, I'm kind of I'm kind of in awe of it because I'm like, man, Rise, Rise was one round away from basically a three zero to elevate, and now we've got a whole new conversation about how good is elevate, how how great can they be? Mm. Are they going to be that team that goes into the major and shakes off some of these monsters going into that winner's bracket? But then yeah. they fall and then they stumble, and it's it's one of those things where it's like, damn, they're they're suffering from the same thing that Fire and Ice suffers from after they stumble. In that map, too, they come back and win the escalation, but then they go down heavy in the control and they can't close it out. They can't find an yeah. opening. They can't have any kind of punch back. Then they go to the execution and it just seems like they never found their footing there. They got a couple of rounds, but it was never it never felt close against Rise in that map five. And it's one of those things where it's like, damn, they're suffering from the same growing pains. And it seems like they're suffering from them early rather than later, whereas we saw Team Queso come out and they were on, I mean, cloud nine. They were, what, 5-0, and 6-0 and before they finally mm -hmm. lost, and then they they went through their growing pains late in the pro league to have a pretty good showing in the majors. So hopefully this teaches some lessons to a team like Elevate, to a team like Fire and Ice, so they go forward from this point and only progress, only get better. There, There's going to be a great matchup coming up here soon, and I don't know when it is, but high versus Fire yeah. and Ice, that's going to be a banger. I'm not going to lie to you, because both those teams want that dub. Yeah, Ain't nobody want to be come TPC. out with that first victory. Nobody, no, <laughs> nobody wants to be Team TPC. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> nobody wants to be those boys. Hell, uh, probably the worst team that we've ever seen in the Gears of War Pro League. You know, to this day, and um, a rightfully so. And I think they're gonna hold that crown forever, um, at least in our hearts. Only because of how they were in that the league, you know, it was a little hard too. Like they're always going to yeah, be, the yeah, it's always going to be the worst team in our league. And we don't say that a lot, but we don't never rag on teams. But you know, some teams were just uh, a little bit more annoying than others. They now. were different. But, yeah, they were they were different. different. Yeah, not annoying. We don't say annoying. They're different. That's right. They were special. They were a special bunch. All right, but let's take a look at the special bunch in which we have in our league currently all 10 teams in their standings and where do they lay? Well, it's going to be Noble and Rise at the top. Pioneers has officially locked in position number three. And when you move on down, E United 2-2 two and two at Rebel, Elevate MPK 2-2 two and two as well. You know, towards the middle of the pack, you know, that's a battle for top four. I was gonna say that middle of the, that middle of the pack there from four to eight. I mean that to me is just that is the lion's den. That is a Royal Rumble scenario come major time because all of those teams can just turn up and pull up on anybody at any given moment. We've got some great, interesting matchups left in the rest of the league. I mean, of course, everybody's gonna look forward to Noble and Rise. Can can Noble continue to be this this prophetic monster that we keep seeing and, and dethrone Rise in their undefeated streak? Are Rise gonna, you know, continue to dominate the league when they continue to have that moxie and that swagger and then, you know, basically be us against everybody? And that's what they've that they've been holding on to. There's no doubt about it. When you look at their tweets, when you look at the way they've played these games. They for sure look at it as we are in the locker room by ourselves. And when we leave here, everyone is an enemy. There's not a single person that's an ally to us. 
maybe some fans out there, maybe a guy like Woo Smoke is out there being a fan of Complex, but it's like for them, there's no player, there's no caster, there's nobody yeah. outside of one or two people that's supporting them. So that that makes Rise very scary. I, I love these standings. I really do, Blaze. It makes this last, the second half of this pro league, it's going to be. Ah. I'm looking forward to the Rise and Noble matchup, the Rise and the Pioneers game as well. You know, both those squads are going to tell me, on um, both those series are going to tell me a lot about Rise and just our top three teams in general. So, um, you know, when, when that day comes, hey, I'm going to be here for it. Soon we'll take a look at our schedule coming up for Tuesday. Um, but, you know, hey, I'm just excited on how close our league has been up until this point. And, you know, Fire Night shows us that they're about to start getting some wins here momentarily, you know, hopefully momentarily, you know, they're on a, you know, they're on up and up. So them and Hive will look forward to that matchup also. So with that being said, uh, yeah, so far, so good. Um, let's take a look at our schedule going into next week. Elevate versus Hive. That's going to be one you don't want to miss. E United and PK coming up right after. That's going to be a fun one. Rebel and Oxygen. We'll be playing against each other as well. Then finally, to end the night, it is Noble versus Rise. You talked about how you wanted to see it, Colin. Oh, my God. It's right there, locked in and set up. I loved how early you were like, I wonder who Noble plays <laughs> yeah, next. Right? And immediately the voice of God was like, shut up. Don't ruin it. <laughs> Okay, don't say anything. That Rebel Oxygen matchup, that's going to be a banger, too. That Dude, we've had back-to-back off-stream matches that are fantastic. Like, we had yeah, Elevate we... and Rise tonight, and next Tuesday you get Rebel and Oxygen. And I think that's going to be a close series. You know, Oxygen don't be playing around, man. You can't sleep on them. They may be 1-3 and three now, but they've had close series. And when it comes down tournament time, if it's one thing that Oxygen has shown us, is that they have composure, okay? So um, I love seeing that team grow, but uh, we'll see where they fall towards in the league and, and going towards the playoffs. But I'll tell you one thing, man, me and you about to go fall asleep here soon, okay? Because that's the wrap-up of our show. We hope you all had a fun time at home. But Colin, what are your closing thoughts? As always... I love each and every one of you. Thank you so much for joining us. I hope to God you're coming back next week because the Gears community are tight-knit family. We might have a bunch of nuts, but my God, we don't fall far from the tree when we do fall. So make sure you're back here next week for all things Gears Esports related on twitch.tv slash Xbox. But of course, don't forget tomorrow, you got E-Days to think about. Twitch.tv slash UMG Gaming to go over there, boys. It's going to be a good one. Yo, we may be a little bit nuts, but we stay cracking over here in the Gears of War community. And we love you all at home. Don't forget, E-Days will be popping off tomorrow. Come hang out with Taylor and myself. And don't forget, E-Days, it's a whole new look. We got points added in. We got a bracket. We got a playoffs for it. If you was under a rock last week and you missed out, oh, hell, don't make sure you miss out tomorrow. Be there. Be square. We're out. We love y'all. Have a good night.